<laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Get Creative Podcast. Today we got two special guests in studio. It doesn't look like they're in studio because they're in the house in a different studio down the hallway, but two of my favorite people on the planet, two people I've done deals with. We're going to talk about deals that they've done with me, deals they've done with other community members. And then we're going to get into the topic at hand today. We're going to be talking about the Avatar series, Direct to Seller. Okay, what does that mean? What is Avatar? What is Direct to Seller? Avatar is a series of people. You got to figure out who the hell you are in this business. So many people join this business and they say to me, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. Oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. It's because you don't know what you should be focusing on. You don't know your avatar. And so your avatar could be transaction coordinator, could be private money lender, could be gator, could be direct to seller, deal finder, or visionary. And these two gentlemen on the screen, Chris Jean Baptiste, he wants me to say Jean Baptiste. Chris, do you like it as Jean Baptiste or Jean Baptiste? Jean Baptiste. All right. Chris JB underscore R E I and Kevin Cho 12, because that's how old people think he is when they meet him <laughs> until they find out he's 22 years old. He'll make at least half a million dollars this year selling deals just to me. I'm thinking he'll probably make seven to eight hundred thousand dollars this year, 500,000 just from me another couple hundred thousand dollars with other people. So tonight we're going to be talking about a deal that Kevin and I have done with Chris and we're going to be entering them into the giveaway we do every single month. So January, we gave away $8,500 from the YouTube income this month. Today is the last entry for the February, February. So today you barely slipped into February, my brother. Okay. Oh, so true. you are going to be the last entry and then last next week on get creative we will be we will be voting as a collective community on who had the most creative deal mm -hmm. now here's the thing if you <laughs> sell me a deal you can have multiple entries on get creative okay? oh, really? but if you're doing deals without me you only get one entry per year and so you expect to see kevin cho a whole bunch of times expect to see chris jean baptiste chris jb underscore rei and Kevin Cho, 12 years old, on Get Creative multiple times. So we should have a lot of fun tonight. By the way, Don Walker, congratulations, Don Walker, on your first sub two deal. We are so proud of you. It's actually not even just her first sub two deal. It's her first deal altogether. What do you guys have to say about that? Wow. Good job. Do you remember when you had your, you remember your first? My, my first deal? Your, was yeah are we talking about deals now or we're we just talking about your first chris do you remember your first oh yeah proof of concept mm. Kevin's that so bridge. confused now Cross i'm throwing, I'm throwing in girls into the conversation pray huh? you remember your first deal kevin you remember your first deal i remember my very first deal yeah what what city was it in groveland florida Gro why bro you lived in vegas at the time the, well yeah that was oh well, my, my the way i got my first deal was um, I did batch texting for a while and then I like kind of stopped doing it. And I went on Facebook marketplace. I got my first deal like two days later. I remember that. And I remember hearing the story about that. That was before I met you. Uh, that was like a month after I met you. Oh, a month after you met me. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. So we should have a lot of fun pace. The graphics are covering your face. Nobody cares about I I'm Zorro. Can't you tell? Let's see. Hold on. Let me see if I can get my eye eyes in the C's right now. No. Okay. Uh, I'll fix that right now. Thank you so much for pointing that out. I wasn't paying attention to it, but thank you so much. Um, all right, guys, direct to seller visionary. We're going to be talking about that and training people on that today. Um, should have a lot of fun. Kevin Cho, yeah. you have a deal that you want to talk about today. What do you want to talk about? What's the deal? Tell me all about it. So I was like, what of all the deals that I've done so far, what's the most creative deal? And well, you got to talk about the deal that you and Chris did together. What are you talking about? Do talk about one of those deals. You guys both get to get the entry or do you guys want to talk about a deal, a deal, an individual deal each and both have an entry into the, into the giveaway. Oh, we can do, we can do, what that do you too. Want, Chris. You're, I look at you and you have the best backdrop of the day, <laughs> bro. You look so good. It's ridiculous. Oh man. Um, Kevin, let's, um, which deal you want to talk about? Cause we did like four deals in the last 45 days. We do, you do, guys wanna, do you guys want to do a deal? Uh, do you guys want to submit your own deal? 
or do you want to submit a deal together? Uh, let's submit it together. Let's talk okay. about the flower hey, which street. one? Let's talk about the flower street. Flower? Oh, that's a great I, one. I love I that think, one. I think out of all the deals, I think that's the best deal we've done. Yeah. All right, who's going to start it off? You guys have 15 minutes to tell me about the deal and tell us, break it all down for the audience so they know where you got the deal, where the lead came from, how you talked to the seller, how is it structured, all that kind of stuff. Tell me all the things. Chris, you can start. because Yeah, so um, 4101 West Flower. So that was a seller. Um, he had it listed with a real estate agent. And, for, you know, obviously the, the agent couldn't sell it. It was listed on the market. I got in touch with the seller because it was an expired listing when I got the list. I got in touch with the seller and everything was good. We spoke, we negotiated, understood his situation and got it under contract. I was not under the impression that he was with an agent. Um, and then I'm trying to remember. No, because so you was on the expired listing. You just went through all every single one of them, and yes, you, I did. And then I you, did. And, and then the house was the house was listed when we first got it, but then the homeowner was already in the process of not trying to sell the house with that realtor. Yeah. So he, but we found out later. We found out after we were already under contract, and so the basically what happened was the seller situation. He needed like twenty five thousand dollars. All the other offers came in. He also had some creative offers that came in, but no one was able to meet him where he needed to be. And we were able to structure a deal where we could give him what he needed up front um, as long as he was willing to work a creative deal with us. And that's what happened. Yeah, so we got it as a subject to deal here in Phoenix. And the, and the craziest... The best part about this deal is that it was a 2.625% 2, 2. interest rate here in Phoenix. Oh, my God. And it was, yeah. So, okay, so let, let, me t let me tell this story for you knuckleheads, okay? Because you guys just, in, in your mind, you guys just told the whole story. Right? Yes. Holy smokes, bro. <laughs> Are you serious? Abbreviated version. Don't give me the abbreviated version. Pretend like I'm a new person. Tell me, tell me hey, I pulled the list here. This is why I like expired listings. I called the seller. His name is Blah. He didn't like talking to me at first. He was in the middle of a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> and I told, I said this, this, and this, and kept him good. Give me the good stuff, bro. Yeah, so it came from an expired listings list. Um, where do I, I pull it? Where Where do I pull an expired listings list? I Help use PropStream. Okay, so you guys go on PropStream. You pull yeah. an expired listing list. Why would I pull an expired listing list? Well, because for one, they can't sell it, right? Obviously, data shows that when they tried to sell it, it failed. The market didn't agree with the number that they wanted for the house. Okay, so what I like, what I like about expired listings, Kevin Cho, take note right here, because you should be, you should be jumping in right now with your partner and saying yes. And the reason why we like expired listings is because the market has already told the seller that their house is not worth what they thought it was. So by right. the time we call the seller, the seller is already frustrated with the market. The seller is not up in the clouds. They've already been rejected over and over and over by everybody besides us. Mm -hmm. And they also are frustrated with the real estate agent. So we come along and we're the freaking heroes. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. But okay. this was so a, Kevin, this was now a... here's what I want you to do. I want you to now reiterate all of that, but yeah. don't make me say, I want I want to hear it from you. Okay. So. This list that we, uh, that we went after, it was expired stacked with a no equity, right? So it was a no equity, no equity list, which I talk about it in a sub two all the time. And it was an, it was an all market deal, no equity. And then it went expired during the holiday season. <clears throat> and we ended up and the house ended up being, uh, going back on the market. But during that vac when it went expired during the holiday time, it actually, uh, that's when we reached out to the seller. Uh, so we, we kind of, we, we know the homeowner needs to get a certain number that they're looking for. Otherwise they can't sell the house. So homeowner, I think they owed, what was it? 280 something, 285. Bro, it's kind of, it's kind of, oh, you should call it the slam dunk list. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Slam dunk. Cause it's like a slam dunk. It's like they, no equity. The market's already told them no. You guys come along and they're like, I bet you this seller was like, really, you can do this. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you know what? When I was I was doing my meetup yesterday, and somebody came up to me and said, "Hey, your no equity list is like it's going to be the no foreclosure list." <laughs> yeah, it is. No equity stacked with expired listings is the slam dunk. It's the Kevin Cho uh, slam dunk list. Yeah, Kevin Cho slam dunk list. Yeah. So we ended up we ended up reaching out to the seller, but the fun the 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 craziest part is the homeowner already had a sub two offer on the table from different investor. But they weren't willing to come up to the number that they were looking for. So they, and what was that number? Was it the purchase price or the cash in the seller's pocket? It was cash in the seller's pocket. Okay. How how were you guys able to give more cash to the seller? Why why were you why did your guys why was it more? Uh just because we sold it to sold it to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so the so so the so they the offer that the homeowner had previously was fifteen thousand dollars cash to seller. And then the homeowner was gonna take care of their listing uh and then and then the investor will pay the listing commission. Mm. But then he really needed $25,000 because he had he was going through like a legal issue. So he needed the $25,000 to pay yeah. for those legal issues so he can get the, get the inheritance. Here we money. go. This is now getting to the good stuff, bro. Yes. People need to know the bunnies. I'm warming man. up. It took, you, it took you this long to tell me about the bunnies? I'm just warming up, Pace. Yeah, it's right. the bunnies. I got it. I was about to turn the air conditioning on in here. <laughs> yeah, so we, we gave the homeowner $25,000. And, and here's another bunny. So everybody was calling and I mean, I'm sure people call from New York where Chris was and then I, and then I'm here in Phoenix. And when I, when I first went to see the, see the seller and as I'm walking out of the house, he says, and he says, you're the only person that actually came to the house and met me in person. Yep. Because the homeowner is, he's, he's very old. He's like 75, 80. And Bro, he, he's, he's like the old, old. That's school young, guy. man. You can't tell people they're old until they're 91 years old. He's, he's a young blood. He's a young, no, I would say if you're 70, I would say he's experienced. He's, he's, he's experienced. In, in his wisdom years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so he, I was the only person that actually went to go shake his hand. And then, and as I'm walking out of the house, you saw, you saw the stack of business cards. Like there's yeah, we made a whole, we made a whole Instagram reel of it. We were holding up the cards and we we're like, look at all these people that missed out on $10,000 of commissions because they're yeah. real estate agents. And they didn't know creative finance and they weren't willing to come to the freaking house. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, so Chris calls, so Chris called, you call Saturday at like 9 30 AM. Yeah. And you call me, you three way me in right away. And I said, Hey, can I go to the house? And he says, yeah, I'm, I'm available to, I'm available anytime today. So I get to the house by 10 15. I like drop everything. I just go to the house. Like, okay. But you're, you know, when you say you dropped everything, like I no. know you. No, okay, like when I when I drop everything, that's saying something. You know what I'm saying? Like I got some stuff going on. When you say you're dropping everything, what does that mean? So like I was getting you were like eating, eating cereal, watching a cartoon. Chris calls you. You had to throw in pants. No, yeah, yeah, literally. It's a, it's, it's a 25 minute <laughs> drive, and I'm out of the house in 10 minutes. I just get Love dressed. It. All right. Yeah. What were you doing though? Can you remember back to that day? <laughs> okay, we're not going to go down that road. All right, so Chris, you're all the way in Brooklyn. Yep. Okay, so anybody that's in New York, New Jer New York, or New Jersey, okay, if you guys are in New York or New Jersey, make sure you guys link in with Chris JB underscore REI. He's a leader in sub two, closes a lot of deals. Um, I would say he has a better looking uh, beard than Max Maxwell. I think actually, when I was talking to Max, he told me he copied your style, bro. <laughs> Yeah, tell tell Max Maxwell come see me, man. Yeah, he owes you royalties, dog. I'm telling you. He even he even took your beard and put it in his logo. That's messed up. Okay, so Chris JB underscore REI, you're in Brooklyn. You're calling on a no equity stacked with a no uh, expired listing list. You talk to yep. the seller. So interesting to me that you didn't find out he he was working with an agent until much later. Like I guess you obviously knew he was working with an agent because you pulled him off the expired listing list which tells you he had at least an agent for a while before the listing failed, right? Yeah. Okay, so what was that first phone call like? With the agent or with him? With the with the seller. Yeah, so towards the end, like after we already had it under contract, I I just reiterated and made sure that it wasn't listed with an agent and he said, "No, we signed paperwork, but I told him to cancel it." And I said, well, did he? And he's like, uh, to my knowledge, yeah. And so that's when I reached out to Kevin. I said, look, we might have a situation. 
Um, and then I believe Kevin reached out to the agent and that's where everything took a downturn. You want to tell them that part, Kevin? Oh, I don't know about this part. I need to hear about this part. This things no. got dicey, huh? Oh yeah. It got real spicy. Well, so I, I, we were under the impression that the homeowner could cancel the listing at any point in the listing agreement, just like pulled it off the market. Well, you can, it just depends on what the listing agreement sta states. Right. If the listing agreement says that it, it can be canceled unilaterally, all the seller has to do is say cancel it. But did you guys ever look at the listing agreement? It was wanky listing agreement. So, it was so one page. Pace, get this. I said, send me a copy of the listing agreement so we could review the actual terms. Seller doesn't have it. He actually did. Wow. Now check this out. It was not signed by him and the date was wrong. Oh, okay. I love it. So then I sent it to Kevin. Kevin then sent it to Molly. And obviously Molly had her own. Why are you guys sending stuff to my COO like she works for you guys? Like, what's up with that, Kevin? <laughs> well, who, who else did we send it to? You send it to you? <laughs> no, you sent, you sent it to Molly. You did the right thing. So what yeah. did Molly say about it? She had her reservations about, you know, the authenticity of it. And then... Kevin actually got in touch with the agent. You want to tell them about the boxing oh, bro, match? I have to hear this. What you I, and I, don't, I, were at I, don't want, I really don't want to talk about it because it didn't. It wasn't. It wasn't beautiful. It was the, the, the bro. Them. The deal. The deal's closed. I own the house. Nobody's coming back after you. You already get, did. You already get paid. I got paid. Chris got paid. And tell us the story, bro. People tell need them. to know. This is this is like real estate, like reality <laughs> TV show right now. Let's go. Okay. Okay. So I call. I call up very politely because I know it's. I, I have a feeling before I call it, I have I had a feeling, oh, this is this might go south. Cause okay. um because at that point the homeowner already called us call up the listing agent and say, Hey, I want to pull the listing off market, not because I don't want to sell it anymore, because I found a buyer that's gonna pay me. And obviously the listing listing agent heard that and he said no. And then he would start he started ghosting the seller. And that's when I stopped stepped in and said, Okay, well, um, let's just let's just say ho the homeowner homeowner is Joe. Hey Joe. Do you want me to step in and get involved in this? And you said, if you can get involved in it and get me out of the listing agent uh, commission, I want you to because the, this listing agent uh, had he he didn't even have a showing on the house, right? For like not not even a single showing, and he was frustrated. But he didn't he didn't know how to get out of it because he didn't know the legalities. So I so I said so I called the listing agent agree, uh, listing agent said, hey, uh, I am uh, Joe's family member, and I uh, and my homeowner and my my um, my uncle, I don't know what I said. I'm, I said. I'm loving every minute of this, by the way. This is I, so great. I said, my uncle is not looking to sell the house anymore. Do you mind taking it off the market? And, and, and he he's said, like, how are you related to him? He, you're, you sound Korean. Is that what he said? No, no, he didn't say anything like that. He just okay. said, well, the, he has a listing agreement. And if he wants to get, if he wants to cancel it, then he needs to pay me and I'll, 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 get, I'll get rid of the listing agreement. You guys can do the deal together. Wow. Okay. But 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 then the but then obviously I don't know any of any terms of the listing agreement that the homeowner signed. So I said, hey, can you give me a copy of the listing agreement? And he said, and he says, well, that's none of your business, buddy. And then he just hung up on me. So like that's that's when things got like a little bit like it started to come up. It's like okay, well, how do we get out of this? Wow. So we tried reaching out to their broker, and the broker wouldn't pick up the phone. And then the seller tried reaching out to this listing agent and their broker, and mm -hmm. they started ghosting us. So we we're like, okay, well, how do we get out of it? So it's, it was a long story. It was like a week, week process. Um, we, hey, we were, any real, any real estate agents out here? We got 700 people roughly watching right now. Any, anybody out here that's a real estate agent that feels like this agent is acting responsibly on the seller's behalf. Anybody Bueller Bueller. So, so the thing is he's not picking up the seller's seller's phone call nor his broker if, and he's not even picking up like actual potential buyers. And so I, I was like, okay, well, I, I talked with Molly. Say, Molly says, hey, I don't think they even have a valid listing agreement. It's not even signed, nor is it a correct date. So we were considering getting uh, your attorney involved, Pace. Mm. But, but Molly and I were like, let's just see what we can settle on because it's not worth the hassle. The homeowner needs the money. He needs to get the inheritance. But like, if this is going to hold it up, he might even back out and nobody's going to get paid. Right. The deal's not even going to get done. So I, I, I shoot him a, I shoot him an email because that's the only, only way I can get a hold of him. I said, hey, um, realtor, this no one's going to get paid 
unless we get situated, unless we get this situated, your commission on this house would have been two and a half percent, which is seven thousand dollars. If you can sell on this for twenty five hundred dollars, let's just call it a day and I will never bother you and you never bother me. So he he agreed to twenty five hundred dollars and we just got everybody get the deal done, you know. Wow, bro. I'm telling you, I would not have I, I you're a really nice guy. I think when I was brand new in the business, I probably would have done the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> but now I, I I'm. I want to get rid of agents that are like this, right? Because I'm not licensed. And I, I feel like sometimes there's an, an, an anti-wholesaler, anti-investor relationship with agents just kind of in their brain. Right. And instead of working with you and saying, hey, yeah, let me send you the listing agreement. Why? It's none of your business, buddy. What do you mean it's none of my business? Yeah. yeah. What do you mean it's none of my business? The seller, anyway, so I would have closed the deal. And I would have made the agent spend money on legal fees to chase me down because I would have had, do I would have documented, Hey, seller says that they canceled with you. They also say they don't ne never sign this. Right. So send, send me a, a signed thing. And I would have moved on and not paid him the money. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even like when we first, the, the seller, he had a listing agreement that was not signed. And then when we asked the listing agreement, listing agent, the dates were like modified. You, you, Chris, you saw the listing agreement. It was modified. Yeah, it was Yo. And I, I'm pretty sure at this, still to this, I'm pretty sure it was a forged signature. It was a forged, yeah, it was a forged situation. Yeah. So basically, Kevin asked the agent, okay, can you send me a copy of the official listing agreement? He sent it over and the dates was modified and it just looked forged. So when we even presented it to Molly, she, she was basically on the same page with us. She agreed that it looked kind of fishy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, wow, wow. But... At the end of the day, everybody got paid. You got a 2.625. We did contents. We spent the whole day with you. Um, so everything ended up working out. But, you know, it's it like, worked out great, bro. You did a great, I'm, I'm going to give you some kudos. So first and foremost, instead of, you know, giving up on the deal and saying there's an agent involved, the agent's rude. You guys called the broker. You guys then were like, all right, well, we want everybody to win. So you went to the agent and offered them a solution for them to get paid. The unfortunate thing is that kind of agent and that kind of human being that never did their job, never even got one, even one showing and has that type of attitude is unfortunately not the type of agent that you ever want to do business with in the future. Right. But you gave them the benefit of the doubt and you gave them 2,500 bucks and, you know, maybe you guys do a deal together in the future, but you can also sleep at night knowing that you did not just the right thing, but you went above and beyond for that agent. Yeah. It's like. Part of it was ego because we knew we were, like if we went to a legal battle, which I've never been in, uh, fortunately, but like it's, it's it was more for the seller. Mm. Like I could give up my ego and get the seller the money and he he moved out versus I can just spend this whole time going to legal actions and, you know, sellers just in such a tough spot. Yeah. So. Hey, Robin Hurt. Um, uh, great question. Real quick. Does anyone know the answer to this? Yes. If a buyer, if a property goes to auction due to the HOA, that would be a sheriff's sale. Just so you guys know, HOA and tax liens go through a sheriff's sale, not an auction. Uh, not they go through a sheriff's auction rather than the the county auction. The one that everybody knows about, the county courthouse steps, is like the foreclosure everybody's aware of. But there is a secondary auction not a lot of people know about, and that's where HOAs and and um, tax liens go to foreclose on properties. Guess what, Robin? Two things that are special about that is one, the HOA is in second position and they are forcing the first position to foreclose on the house. And the first position will get paid before the HOA gets paid. The HOA is in second position. So the lender will get paid first. However, the lender does not get paid until the uh, grace period is up. Now in a sheriff sale situation, like if my house gets foreclosed on by my lender, the day I get foreclosed on, it's over. It's done. I'm not getting the house back. I don't go back to the bank and beg them and say, please give me the bank back. It's done. Somebody bought it on auction. There's a new investor. They own the property now. Okay. Now, in the rare situation where the house doesn't sell and it goes back to the bank, right? Nobody on the county courthouse steps buys the deal and no investor wanted it at that price. Then the bank goes, crap. I guess we'll take the property back. And that is now what we call an REO, real estate owned by the bank. The bank has now taken that property back. The bank does not want it. That's not their business. They hate it. They'd rather sell it on auction. Okay. But that type of auction gets closed out day one. Okay. An HOA 
or a tax lien auction, separate auction, completely unrelated, not even in the same building or in the same department, called the sheriff's sale. They have a redemption period, first and foremost. So the seller can come along and redeem that property by paying the HOA debt even up to six months after the foreclosure happened. If nobody comes and redeems that debt during the redemption period, then the first lien position gets paid first and then the HOA gets paid second. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So, um, Robin Hurt, good to see you in here. All right. So, boys, 2.65, yes. 2.625, or what is, what's the interest rate? 2.625. Yeah. Do you know what I'm doing with that house? Do you have any idea what I'm doing with that house? I, 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 you told me it was going to be a long term rental. Yeah, I think it's a regular rental. It's a regular rental, but why haven't I? Why have I not started working on it yet? Uh, because of the roof. No, that house is going to be on the TV show, and I'm going to have you come on the TV show. No way! Are you? Wow! Yeah, yeah, that'll be one of the episodes that we film this summer. I'm going to buy that house, and we're gonna, we're gonna, um. We're going to hold it in the portfolio and talk about that on Triple Digit Flip, that the market has changed a lot and that we are um, we are going to keep a lot of properties in our portfolio because the market is changing up quite a bit. So I'm trying to get one of the reasons I'm trying to get you to give me a lot more properties this year, just as an individual, I want to highlight you on the TV show a bunch. Yeah. Are you up for it? Yeah, I'm up for, you have, we're, we're closing on two, two other sub twos. You and me, Pace. When? So the Vegas ones? Vegas one is closing uh, next Friday. This coming When's Friday? our next one, dude? That's the only, the only thing. The only deal I care about is the next deal. That's the only one I care about. This this coming Friday is the is a closing date. Okay. For the Vegas and then house. Chris, yes, what sir. are you, Chris? What are you focusing on right now? Like, how can people work with you? How can I get more deals from you? I'm looking for more creative deals. I have a goal to do. I need to sell you 50 deals. That, this year, first of all, but I would love to. Is I'm looking for ten properties to buy personally in my portfolio within the first two quarters. In what market? Um, Florida, Arizona, Las Vegas, mm. and I'm flirting with the Texas market right now. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, so anybody that wants to get to know Chris JB underscore REI, follow him on Instagram, Kevin Show Twelve, guys. Everybody in sub two, you guys know these boys as uh, big leaders. Kevin, I took him as a 20-year-old and just highlighted him, highlighted him, highlighted him. And every time I'm around this boy, I put a lot of pressure on him. I'm trying to show you guys that a 20-year-old, a 21-year-old, a 22-year-old can make half a million dollars in a year. Okay? It's completely possible. Kevin and Chris, what do you guys need primarily in your businesses that the community can come and bring to you? You guys need people to work underneath you in terms of calling, doing lead management. What do you guys need in your businesses? Right now for me, I have the, the, the no equity list that I kind of give it out to all the stuff to students for them to call. And there's a lot of people that got deals in, in, on that list. Um, I, I would like more students to be calling it and then potentially even JV on it and maybe sell deals to you so that um, other JV students can maybe even sell you a deal that ends up going on the TV show. That, that'd be a, that'd be a cool project. I would love that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely more JV opportunities. Definitely want to, you know. What, and what does that mean, Chris? You need people maybe calling on lists with you and you need to like help give them a place to plug in. Like you need 10 or so new sub two students to come to you and say, Chris, tell me what to do. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, cool. So if, guys, if you're a sub two community member, reach out to Chris JB underscore REI on Instagram and say, yo, I'm in sub two. How can I call on this list? I'll handle Florida for you. The great thing about Chris and Kevin is they can take the deal all the way to the finish line. So when you're brand new and you need a place to plug in, you just need some leads, right? And you right. need some guidance. This is why we have leaders in our communities. These guys will lead you in individual marketplaces, individual areas. So you guys can have a little bit more ability to plug into a direct business. I have a full time um, TC now that helps me out with all the paper. Yes. Bro, stop brag. Stop flashing on people, dude. Like, well, <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure, you know, what are they, what do you guys call that? What do you gen Xers call that? That's called flexing, right? Flexing. I think Chris is the only one that should be flexing on the screen dog. 
Oh man, here you go. Come on, bro. Flat. All right, that's pretty. That's really cool, bro. You have a full time transaction coordinator working on your team. That's something to be really proud of. Yeah. So it's been going great. Kevin, I want to hear about um, the newest deal. The newest deal? Do you have time or we got to go in like... Bro, we do whatever we want here. This is my podcast. I'm not on anybody else's time. I'm on my time. So you, what do you, what you guys want to talk about? Tell me about it. The newest deal that we have? No, the one that you... Um... Oh, the one that I was originally going to do? Yeah, the one that recently happened with the employee. Oh, oh, that. Oh, can I? I'll tell you about that. Let me tell yeah. you about that. That's a good one. I actually was contemplating adding a new rule to sub two. Like, I'm, you know, I'm going through and re recording all the trainings for sub two 2.0. Yeah. And one of the rules I have not put in there is do not talk about a deal until it's been closed. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is something I do all the time where I'm like, I'm at an appointment talking to a seller. And I, I put like the, front of the house on the photo or on my Instagram stories. And then all of yeah. a sudden you get like seven messages of, Oh, I'm working that lead right now. And what do they do? They take a screenshot of my, my stories and they send it to the seller and go, Oh, this guy's talking about you on social media. Okay. And they leverage me against the seller to get the deal done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've just, I've learned the lesson. I thought like three, four years ago, I wouldn't really deal with this too much, but like now it's gotten to a point where, because of the TV show and the YouTube channel and all the other things, a lot more people follow me. So what happens in my local market, all the people that are working my local market, I can't go to appointments like I used to all the time. Right. And there you go. Carolyn and Myron, same thing. We were talking about a deal in San Angelo. We ended up still buying the deal. I actually think we got a better deal on it now, a, a month later. But what happened is I was talking about the deal on Get Creative. And Carolyn and Myron had somebody snake around them to the seller directly and was like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? So that's what happened on your deal. Yeah. We had, this is what happened. So seller, uh, Kevin has a deal in Mesa. Seller, it lost her job because guys, surprise, surprise, the market is changing. There's a major shift happening. A lot of layoffs are happening and it will continue to happen. If you're a loan officer, learn some new skills. Did you okay? watch my story today, Pace, by, by any chance? You're, you're what? Did you watch my Instagram post today? No. About the mortgage company? No. I'll be real quick. So like we, Chris and I go to WeWork and there's a 500 square foot office that used to be a mortgage company. And Gone. Now. Gone. Yeah. Nothing there. Gone. Yeah. Yep. And the people in the mortgage industry is like, oh, that's, that's par for the course for our industry. That's, that's what happens all the time. <laughs> They're right. They are yeah. right. The industry is rife with that kind of stuff. It's just full of those types of things. So. I used to be a loan officer in the heyday. And then I remember hearing all these stories from loan officers saying, oh yeah, when things go bad, oh, it's good right now, but just wait till it's bad. I'm like, man, do I want to be a part of an industry that's like that where I have no control over what happens? And you just like, you have to make so much money for like three, four years that you go, all right, for the next three, four years. So the next three, four years, I'm not going to make really any money and I'm okay with that. Right. I didn't want to be in that industry, but if you're in mortgages, underwriters, processors, Anybody in the mortgage industry whatsoever, your job, you guys have noticed lots of layoffs happening right now. I bought a deal um, four months ago where an underwriter got, lost her job. She sold her house to me sub two. Right here, Kevin Cho has a seller in Mesa, just right down the road from me, works for a mortgage company, large one, really, really big one nationwide, by the way. And she gets her paycheck on Friday, shows up on, she was about to leave for work on Monday. She gets an email saying, don't show up to work today. Don't bother. Everybody's getting let go. Okay. This is getting going to get way worse. Interest rates are going to continue to go up and up and up. Do you guys see um, Signature Bank got closed today? The third largest bank in US history got closed Yep. today. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. This is systemic, which means that it's, it's in the system. This It's like a virus. Things are happening. Okay. It's, there's a trickle effect. This ain't the end of it. It's going to get worse. And the FDIC is stepping in and there's some good things happening where the FDIC is like, hey, we know that we only insure people at $250,000 or below, but you know what we're going to do? Sadie Espinal says, do you guys think the market will crash? Sadie, let me ask you a question. If the market went down 19%, would you consider that a crash? Would you consider that a crash, Chris or Kevin? Uh, 
it would go down even more. So I was, I would say yes. Okay, nationwide, our entire real estate market has gone down an average of nineteen percent in the last nine months. So you guys tell me, are we heading for a crash? And interest rates are going to go up three more times this year. What do you guys think? Yes. You saw what happened with interest rates going up last year and interest rates are going to go up three more times this year. And it's yeah. not like, it's not like when an interest rate goes up, something bad happens and then interest rates go up, that same bad thing happens. No, it compounds. Something worse happens. Yeah. Then it compounds and something worse happens. That is what is going to uh, transpire in our marketplace. Yeah. Do sellers know this yet? Yeah. You guys want to know how I know sellers know? Today was the first day marked today that I bought a deal off TikTok today. What? Wow. Yeah. yeah listen to this. Um, oh, wow. My DMs are blowing up. Hold on a second. Off of TikTok. That's off of TikTok. He says to me right here. Uh, da, 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 da. He says, uh, hey, um, I want to sell my house, my house to you on owner finance. I'm a local business owner. Are you interested? I said, yeah, sounds cool. Um, I only buy sub two, though. And he says, oh, I'll look that up. I said, I take title on sub two, blah, blah, blah. That's what I specialize in, yada, yada. It gives me the address. Gorgeous house in Austin, Texas, by the way. Mm. Okay, gorgeous house. He, I said, ooh, uh, he gives me the address. I said, oh, it looks like the listing was taken out. Couldn't find a buyer, huh? <laughs> expired listing. We Guys, we're talking about this, right? If you're trying to go direct to seller, expired listing is the way to go, okay? Um, he says, I know. I said, the mar I said market's going to get worse. Rates are going to go up again. Um, if, you let, if you let me take over your payments as is, I'd be interested. He says, I know, and I, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm 60 and I want to be close to my son. I miss them so much. I saw your TikTok and knew I had to reach out to you. Shoot. I'm getting sellers on TikTok just handing their, the keys over to their houses to me. What is a 60-year-old man doing on TikTok, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he heard Kevin Cho was on there, bro. <laughs> That's right. So let me ask you guys a question. Do you guys think, okay, do you guys think that sellers know that the market is tanking? Yes. When I get messages yeah. like this, um, he also sent me a text message. So I, I basically, we go back and forth. He sends me a photo of his family. I send him a photo of my family, just showing him that I'm real. I send him a little video on Instagram uh, DMs. And I say, hey, let's get on a call. And uh, I said, text me. Here's my phone number. He sends me a text. And he says, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. I reached out to multiple other people, and you're the only one that replied. Wow. So he saw my TikTok talking about taking over payments. Right. Another reason you guys should be doing content. People do watch stuff. Right. And I got a house today in Austin. Free house. Free house. How many how, how many free houses do you think you can buy this year? Just I that. think that this year I could probably get a hundred free houses. Wow. I mean, they won't be free because I'll pay an assignment fee on them, right? And I'll right. pay closing costs and stuff like that. But like seller walks away type of thing. Here's right. my keys, free house in that situation. I mean, you were in an appointment the other day. How much am I paying for that house? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, furniture. You're paying, you're paying for the furniture. And why would I pay for the furniture in that situation? Because it's easier for you. It's easier for the seller to leave the furniture there. He was like, hey, can I store this furniture here when I, while I go overseas? And I go, how about I just buy it from you so I don't have to deal with this? Right. That was, it was actually a better solution for me. I was like, let me buy it. Get it out of here. I don't want it. Right. Okay. Rod Carver says, don't discriminate because of age. Everyone uses till talk. <laughs> uh, you know, my funniest thing I ever talked to some, some, I was talking to somebody about YouTube and he called, he kept calling it YouTube, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube. And I was like, what is YouTube? Like, is this like a new thing that I'd never heard of before? And I'm like sitting there Googling YouTube. And then I realized, <laughs> oh, you don't know it's called YouTube. You think it's YouCube because it's a square, like a, a watching a video on a square. YouCube. It was great. I was, I was talking to a seller and he calls it Zylo. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Dope. <laughs> so yeah, guys, the answer is yes. The 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 sellers are aware of things happening. You hear it all in the market. I mean, when when SV, you know, you've got Silicon Valley Bank defaults. Do you think that sellers are aware of that happening? That was everywhere. That went viral. It's the second yeah. largest bank in history. 
to default besides Washington Mutual. And what happened with Washington Mutual, they had to get come in and get bought out by Chase Bank. Mm. That was gnarly. Absolutely so, gnarly. So if you're if you're if you're an audience, what would you what would be the best way to get to capitalize on this the most? Do you think like being like liquid would be the best option or what what do you think, Pace? Bro, I I I do I use any of my own money to buy deals? No. No. So what do I care about liquidity? So just You were yeah, in my I, office 2 days ago and Carolyn and Myron called me on a deal in San Angelo yeah. and they needed $41,000 to make the deal work. And how much money did I have in my bank account? 2000. 2000. I showed you my bank account. I had $2,000 to my name. Mm -hmm. I had just paid off like $600,000 in private money lenders, right? I had just refinanced some properties, paid them off. I'm constantly recycling through private money lenders, right? Right. And what did I do? I didn't have even have money for earnest money. What did I do right there live? You borrowed money for the earnest money. I borrowed money for my earnest money from a gator named Danny Gish. She wired the five grand to title. I'm still no money out of pocket. I'm going to get that San Angelo deal. I'll go get a private money lender to give me $44,000 for that. Bro, I, what do I need cash for? Right. Other people have cash. I'm yeah. going to keep, I'm going to keep buying property, buying property, but I'm not even buying property at this point. What am I buying? I'm buying low interest rates. You just got me a 2.625% interest rate. When the F in history, have you ever seen that? Never. Before Kevin was born. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing is here's how you capitalize on it. Let's get back on the topic at hand. Okay. Yeah. Direct to seller is what I would be focusing on. That's what I, that's what I focus on. You know, I love agent outreach, but my challenge with agent outreach is like, if somebody could invent, okay, if somebody could invent something and Jamil and I have, I feel invented this, okay, Jamil and I just had a meeting about this three days ago. If somebody could invent the ability to wipe out the first 30 conversations with the text message to an agent, through automated intelligence or AI, right? Artificial intelligence, somebody communicating with the agent. So I don't have to talk to those knuckleheads and go through the whole thing of like sending them links. So, hey, check out this video or hey, check out this video. Here's what sub two is and blah, blah, blah. And then get them ready to get on a phone call with me. Now I'm down for direct agent. Okay. But for me and Jamil, by the way, Jamil and I have a challenge coming up called the robot challenge or the AI challenge. It's going to be at the end of the month and it's going to be all about do, utilizing AI to have conversations with agents. And then in a couple of months, we're going to add, add it for AI for having conversations with sellers all through text message. And it's all automated for you until the seller is ready to get on a phone call. Wow. Bro, it's insane. It's mm -hmm. like literally everything that they could ever text you gets a, a valid response that is not robotic and it's more conversational. It's bonkers, okay? So for me, if I'm going to capitalize on this upcoming market, it's going to go on for at least 24 months. We're going to have a heyday in, real, in, in uh, creative finance. A normal year for me, okay, at my level, a normal year for me is I would look at and go, man, 100 single family homes in my portfolio is a worthy goal. I could probably do more, but 100 is a worthy goal. Mm -hmm. This year, I think legitimately, no exaggeration, I could do 500 deals if I can find enough private money. Wow. Wow. We Abraham Gray and I just started our deal or no deal program with all the students. Uh -huh. And our first week, we got 14 deals. Nice. Wow. What markets? Alaska, Maryland, Texas, a lot of Texas, um, Florida. Uh, I've never bought in Tennessee before, but we got a Tennessee deal. We got an Oklahoma deal. We got an, an Arizona deal. We're going to be buying a ton. So we will be, bro, we will buy so many deals. And you, you guys assigning them. And also at the same time, what you said, Chris, was saying, I, how can I add 10 of these to my portfolio? Yeah, right. Bro, how can you how can you add 10 deals to your portfolio this year? You haven't even been in real estate 24 months. No. And you're gonna most people are like, I will retire and be done working with 10 rentals. And you're like, I'm gonna add 10 rentals this year. Yeah. I'm excited.
I think Kevin, that's, I think a big mindset thing that Kevin needs to go through is like, it's time for Kevin to start owning property, not notes. I like notes. I like creating wraps. Yeah. You got to be a property owner this year. Yeah. Speaking of, I have to find my primary residence. Yeah. Why not? Why don't yeah, we do that this week, bro? Come on. Yeah. Okay. Sadie says, wow, I was going to guess 300, but 500. I don't know that I'll do 500. I think logistically, I think it's impossible to do 500 deals. Like, and hold them. Because think about this. Right now, Chris, when are you going home? Uh, Thursday. Oh, good. You extended. Yeah. Smart man. Why don't you just move here, bro? That's what I'm saying. Kevin is trying to get me to move here. We'll, we'll There'd be a that. lot of women here that would just, they would probably, all the women in the United States would move here too. I was like, Chris, you should came to church with me today. Half of Brooklyn would just move out here if Chris lived out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's probably true. A hundred percent true. Because they'd want to work on your team. Nothing with your arms that can't fit in your shirt. <laughs> okay. Uh, they say the pizza is better here. Okay. Oh, interesting. Uh, I, I, would, I would argue that. Jacob, he bro, he's an I like Jacob a lot. He bought my F-150. I, he's a solid dude. He was great on Get Creative a couple weeks ago. And it, that's one thing. Trash. That's one thing he's wrong on. He's John right. Carroll says uh, he wants to own 10 deals this year. Um, why don't we find your house this week? I love that. That's I think that it actually is a really yes. good goal. Yeah. Do multifamily carry a greater risk than single family? Yes. Why? Yes. Tell me, tell me why, Chris and, and Kevin. I, I have a great answer, but I want to see what you guys think about this. Multifamily, you're buying a business. I like that. Kevin? Well, when we were at dinner two days ago, you said the, no, the multifamily notes are typically 36 months. Is that what you said? So when Yeah, it's all bridge, right? So yeah. these, these real estate investors go out and buy multifamily. And their whole entire strategy is competing against some of the largest institutions on the planet. Right. Mm -hmm. So most of them are not going out and getting fixed debt. They're going out and getting bridge financing, which only lasts 36 to 60 months. Right. Right. Okay. So when that 36 months is up, their plan is, oh, great. We've already renovated the property. We've done our value add, right? We've added more units or we've renovated and updated the units raised our rents. Now we're going to take that property, which hopefully over those 36 months has been going up in value because the market is appreciating. Let's go sell that to a big hedge fund. Mm -hmm. But when SVB bank, SVB bank defaults and um, Signature Bank defaults in the same freaking weekend, the two, two of the largest banking failures in US history. Okay, the second and third largest bank fail failures in all of U.S. history, not just since our recent crash, but in all of U.S. history, fail in the first week. Where do you think our market is trending? Is it flatlining? Is it maybe trending downward? Okay, obviously it's trending downward. Okay, it doesn't mean we're going to head towards a spiral crash where a hundred thousand dollar property is going to sell for five thousand bucks. That's not what that means, mm -hmm. but it does mean that these people that were anticipating to sell their multifamily properties at the end of 36 months or 60 months to a larger institution and essentially do a long-term flip to them right. now can't sell the properties because these multifamily properties have decreased in value because their new buyer can't get anything underneath a seven, eight, nine percent interest rate. So that means the property's value is way less than it was 24 months ago, 36 mm -hmm. months ago. Mm -hmm. And so all of these multifamily operators are calling me, not all of them, but a good amount of them are calling me and saying, will you just take this property off our hands? And I say, not yet. <laughs> not, yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. And I think in six to nine months, really well capitalized and organized people are going to gobble up some of the best multifamily deals this country has ever seen. Because wow. that temporary debt, that 36-month debt and that 60-month debt, guess what it's going to do? It's going to go back to the bank and these multifamily properties are going to get foreclosed on mm. and the banks are going to fire sell them so they can get their, at least some of their money back. Right. And funds like me, we started a fund, we call it the Sub2 Fund, where we primarily only let Sub2 community members invest in our fund. That fund will raise $100 million this year to go and buy failing multifamily deals at 60 to 75% on the dollar. Wow. 
Yes. And we will underwrite them at 8% and 9% interest rates. And when interest rates do come down closer to six or five, and they normalize probably around five and a half, I think five and a half is going to be a normal interest rate in three years from now. We will then refinance and the properties will be worth more. So we'll be doing the opposite of what most people were doing the last 36 months. But to be fair to them, they had no idea that the Fed was going to raise rates the way they are. Right. So why is single family safer than multifamily? Because single family has fixed debt for 30 years. So do I care what the value of 4101 West Flower Street is today? No. As long as I have a 2.65% or 2.625% interest rate attached to it, market's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down, but my interest rate stays the same. Rents go up. Rents go up, right? Interest rates are going to stay the same. My payment's going to stay the same. It's a fixed debt. So for me, the, the, if you're brand new and you're like, what should I do? Start with single family or multifamily. What would you guys want to do? What would you, what is the smart way to go? If you are just starting out single family, single family all the way. Yeah. Plus. Plus. It's easier. Oh yes. Definitely easier. I'll sell you, Pace, I'll sell you 50 deals and I'll drop your net worth like $5 million. <laughs> yeah, you probably will. 100%. You probably, but again, do I pay my bills off of my net worth? No. I pay my bills off my cash flow. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I take you to Korean food the other night, by, by the way, how good was that Korean food? That was going to lie. That was phenomenal. I'm trying to go back before I leave. We should go back. We'll make, Let's we'll make it. a trip. Of it. It'll be fun. Let's do it. Okay. So um, that money that I pay for all my bills with comes from cash flow. I don't, I, Molly looks at my, every Friday, my bookkeeper, my CFO, Molly, and a couple other people on my team have a meeting. They call it the pace update meeting. It's Friday at 11 AM. I have never been to that meeting. They sit there and they talk about my net worth. They talk about the businesses. They, I don't, I, they just send me an email. I don't care. I'm just going to continue to buy properties. Cause I know, I know the game. Right. Every single real estate investor in history is like, I should have bought more faster and held them longer. Every yeah. single one. Yep. Even the people, here's the funny thing. Even the investors in 2008 that were like fire selling their properties because it was like the first time in like a hundred years that something that bad had happened. They look back in retrospect and they're like, I should have just kept all my properties. They would have continued to cash flow. Right. Market came back up. But more importantly, my tenants would have been paying the mortgages down for the 10 years that I was waiting for it to come back up. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Taylor says, uh, it, it's so funny, guys. If you are brand new, we've given you the advice. But I got I to gotta reach out to you. Here, hold on, Taylor. Let me touch you. And, the, and let me, hold on. Taylor, touch my hand. Taylor, Taylor, reach out. Taylor, are you, are you reaching out? Okay, I'm holding your hand right now. I'm holding your hand. Go and call expired listings, listings. stacked with no equity. Yep. And here's how you find them. Reach out to Chris, JB underscore REI, and Kevin Cho 12 on Instagram and say, show me where I can get this list or can I just call for you and I'll plug into your team. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm letting go of your hand. There, I just handheld you. Yeah. I just told you the answer to your, your deal. I'm new and I need help getting my first deal. That was just answered right there. And actually, yeah. remember Pace, I set a personal challenge before I leave on Thursday, me and Kevin got a goal to do 10, 10 deals. 10? So literally by Thursday, we need 10 deals. So send us all your deals. Let's oh, you want, you're good. You're good. Look at this. Reach out and touch. Pay. Oh, that's hilarious. Jacob Caddick. Thank you for the 10 bucks. <laughs> got Chris got $10 Thursday. for New York pizza or something like that. I saw it on the side chat. Huh? Chris, you got like 10 bucks for a pizza on the side oh, chat. man. I'll give you the 10 bucks. Thank you, Jacob Caddick. He's awesome. Jacob's awesome. Okay, so we already know, the, but that's a great thing, okay? Oh, David Awa said he hijacked the handhold. Did anybody, who else was holding my hand? Hold on, guys, everybody on, in the audience. We have 815 people here. Everybody hold my hand. <laughs> hold my hand, guys. Reach out your hand. If you're, if you're watching this right now and not reaching out your hand, I am pissed off. Even our live audience right now is reaching out their hand. I could grab like five people. <laughs> hey, Kevin, hold my hand. Put your hand down below. Oh, I got you. <laughs> wow, you are horrible here. Chris, Chris, hold my hand. I got you. Love you, bro. Love you. There we go. There we go. 
Chris, can we do it again? Do, do a three-way handhold, please, guys. Do a three-way handhold right yeah. in the center. Kevin, you got to angle it right. Br bring your bring your See, hands down to me. There we go, Kevin. Keep yours there, Chris. Bring yours to me. Uh -oh. There we go. There we go. Now, guys, we're all holding hands. <laughs> okay. There you go, guys. Simple cash offer is pace. Your palm is sweaty. Yeah, because I had your mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Um, All right. So here's the thing is direct to seller, right? Going back to Taylor's yeah. question. It's yeah. pretty simple. Like if, if I need a deal today, oh, dig, Jacob Caddick is just donated us $20 for Kevin's first house. Thank you, bro. Oh, what? One That's time, guys, one time I had um, Munif. I don't know what mo was up Munif's skirt one day, but he got, he was like pumped. He was pumping the side chat and he got $1,300 donated for somebody's first house. It was crazy. Wow. Kevin's first house, 20 bucks. Thank you, Jacob Caddick. Wow. Pretty, appreciate that. Thank you. He says, that's all you need. Actually, you know, it's funny. Kevin, you wouldn't live in that house that I just got for free, would you? The one in all the way in Glendale? Yeah, it's too oh, far, right? Yeah, it's way too far out. Okay, mm -hmm. you want to be aware, like Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert, Chandler, what? Yeah, yeah. Mesa, Tempe, uh, Chandler, Gilbert, yeah. Oh, bro, Dallas Mortgage Man. Oh, he's so dope, by the way. He's great. But guys, follow him on on, on YouTube. He's great. Um, I will buy... I'm sorry, but South Dakota, Garrett Hone. This is what you're asking me. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm in a, um, a video game, I'm playing a video game, and I walk out of the house into the street, and there's two cars there. Both cars have a set of keys already in the ignition, ready to go. One car is a broken down El Camino mm. with two flat tires, <laughs> but it'll drive a little bit. And the other one is a Ferrari, brand new, out of the factory. Which one are you guys taking, Chris and, and, and Kevin? The Ferrari. Ferrari. Okay, so when you guys ask me, Pace, what do you think about North Dakota? It'll work, but it's like an El Camino with two flat tires. I can drive. It'll work, but what's the other opportunity I'm passing up? North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Texas, Atlanta, Nevada, Phoenix. Oh, my word. There's so many better places to invest. That being said, I am buying in South Dakota this year. So I will, yeah, I'll bet I, by the end of the year, I will have, I promise you this right here. You, you girls see this big empty wall right here? Do you know what's going on that wall? An entire massive 12 foot by eight foot map of the United States and every single city will be full by the end of the year. Hmm. I'll have, I, it won't be pins. It'll be pictures of students' faces. Yep. People I partnered with. So I'll have all the partners and it'll be my partner pin map. It'll be dope. El Camino, $10. Oh, thank you. So wow. We're, we're making money right now, bro. Wow. That would be my wow. entry for you. Um, pay, uh, Jeff says, Jeff Husa, he's here in Arizona. Are you still excited about Birmingham? I love Birmingham. I went, the first time I went to Birmingham, I YouTube, what is Birmingham all about? And somebody, there was a YouTube video that says, it's not Birmingham. It's called Murderham. It's one of the murder capitals in the United Birmingham. States. I was expecting to see a horrible place, get there, loved it. It was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Shout out to uh, Jeff. Shout out to Jeff. He's, isn't he dope? Yeah. I met him, um, yesterday at the meetup. Phenomenal, bro. He joined when he joined sub two. He lived in Papua New Guinea and he would come in at like two o'clock in the morning. His time was like five o'clock in the afternoon, our time. Oh man. Um, yeah, okay. So, David, David Smith says multifamily or single family, which are you focusing on more on last night? I'm not sure the last part of that question, but I think I understand what you're saying. Are, which one am I focusing on more? All right. So, he, guys, let me, let me. Give you an analogy. Marta Miner gave us a super sticker. Whoa. Wait, we're making all this money. Bro, she's one of my partners in multifamily, by the way. Good to see you, Marta. She's doing a great job on her content, too. Just want to say I'm impressed by your Instagram game lately, Marta. Keep it going. I am watching you. Okay. I think it was all the hand-holding that got people really excited about giving us money for Kevin's first house. Let's do it. Guys, I promise you that all the money will be donated to Kevin's first house. Okay. So David Smith says, multifamily or single family, which are you focusing on this year? Imagine Kevin, Chris, mm. you and I, all three of us decide, hey, we're going to go buy a Subway franchise, a, a, a sandwich making franchise, right? Yeah. We hire employees, starts making sandwiches. We're making good money. We're all making $3,000 a month take home. 
Then the next month we get better and better and better. We get up to a point where we're all taking home $8,000 a month, right? $24,000 a month take home from this business. Mm -hmm. Then I get excited about another business. I want to open up a pizza shop because I find out that I could make 30 grand a month opening up a pizza shop. Do I shut down my Subway franchise to go open up a pizza shop? No. No. Why not? It's already working. Why? Why, why would you, you shut down? Stop? That's already. Why working. would you shut down continuing revenue? Yeah. This is my point to David Smith. Is David Smith? I built a single family acquisition model where we're buying dozens of properties. Minimum every year we'll buy fifty properties a year in the portfolio. Sub two seller finance. Why would I ever turn that mechanism off in order to focus on multifamily? It doesn't make sense. All I'm doing is creating another team on multifamily. And this year we will have a team that I, here's the thing is I'm focusing on both because I have great teams that run them, but multifamily is getting a different type of focus from me this year, which is building a team that does not, it did not exist six months ago. Mm -hmm. And single family is just honing and making more efficient a, a team that I've had for several years. Right. But they both get the same amount of time. They get the, both get the same amount of energy they're just in different phases. And that hopefully that answers your question. David Smith says, how can I sign up for that team? I am I will never again in my life hire somebody who does not have more experience than I do in whatever the job is I'm hiring. Just so you guys know. Okay. So um, as, love, as, as much as I love talking um, to brokers, I have to get back on the agent train. Yeah, it's tough, man. Multifamily. You got to look at more deals, talk to more savvy investors. Most, most brokers are way smarter than most real estate investors, just to be honest. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Pace, what about my 520 FICO score borrowers that have uh, that score borrowers that have five to 10% down, but can't qualify because of FICO? Where do I send them on your team? They're ready to buy. Boom. Rap buyers. Rap city. Rap, rap city. Rap city all day. Okay, so Dallas Mortgage Man, put your contact information in the side chat. I promise you, all of my community, this is Carolyn and Myron are doing a lot of raps. Yep, Carolyn yep. and Myron will sell deals to you. Kevin Cho will sell deals to your to your students. Uh, Chris will sell deals to your, not your students, I'm sorry, but your clients that are getting turned down. So Dallas right. Mortgage Man, guys, this is what's amazing about creative finance is that he's like, hey, yo, I got a lot of people getting turned down because they have money but they can't qualify because of their FICO score. Right. Man. Bro. Shout out to Carolyn. And Myron. Shout out to Carolyn and Myron. They'll do a bunch of deals with you. You got to do both. Yep. 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 I love hotels. Okay, cool. So everybody, please connect with Dallas Mortgage Man. Dallas Mortgage Man, please put your contact information in the side chat so everybody um, can connect. By the way, Carolyn and Myron, Dallas Mortgage Man came to your meetup where we had 580 people at the Dallas meetup. He was there. Uh, so you guys definitely need to connect with him. Okay. Melissa Smith, she just paid me back $86,000. Pace, when did you buy the first investment property that you still have? And how many do you have today? The first investment property I bought that I still have. Um, that's a different question than what's the first property I bought and ended up selling. Cause that, I don't own that property anymore, unfortunately. I, I wish I kept it. Um, probably the oldest one in my portfolio is seven years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. And how many properties do I have today? I have right around 1,800 doors. Hmm. 1,800 doors. We will probably hit, I, I'd say we will hit 3,000 doors this year. Imagine all the cash flow that comes in every month. Wow. I don't, I, you know where, where that money goes? Thousand dollars in his bank account, bro. Just, you just, you just get rid of it. That's yeah, it. you saw it. I mean, my bank account, the day before you guys were there, my per, this is my personal bank. I have other businesses, right? But like my real estate business, another thing, there's money going through all the time and start virtual. There's money going through all the time. My title and escrow business, money going through it all the time. Like this is my personal access to cash. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I had seven or $800,000 in the bank the day before. And I go, who do I want to pay off? Because I never want to have money. I get right. lazy when I have money. You're complacent. Yeah. The best deals I've ever negotiated in my life came when I was broke. And the worst deals I, I did were when I had plenty of money. So when the seller says, well, I want 50 grand down, my answer immediately was like, yeah, I can do that. 
I, th- I think also best deals come come when you actually don't want the deal. Oh, so like, exactly. Yeah. The, 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 the deal that I was going to talk about, it was a free house in Louisiana that I got where I got the seller to take his up to no money down. And I had the seller cover the closing costs. But prior to that conversation, I was literally like, I don't want I don't want the house. I don't even know where this is it, where this is. Mm-hmm. And I ended up getting a free house. And that's still- you didn't even know Louisiana was a state at the time. <laughs> I was like, this is LA. <laughs> You're like, LA? LA? Is that Los Angeles? But yeah, um, best deals when I didn't want the deal. Yeah. So the best, the, the, the best advice I can give to myself is just knowing yourself. Some other people would not do a great job with that with their personality. Some people's personality is, can I keep, I want to hoard cash. I want to always have cash. Yeah. I have an American Express. I have money that comes in daily from all my rentals. Yeah. I have nine different paychecks that come from nine different businesses. I never worry about money coming in. I just don't want ever want to have it. So mm-hmm. money comes in starting on July 1st. I will now have a family office that manages my money for me. And so oh. things will change up a little bit. I will be bringing that family office into the sub two community. So you guys can see how my family office advises me how to deploy my capital differently at a different level. And um, that'll be really interesting to see you know, the difference between me managing and making all the decisions on my own and now having to ha- have it go through a filter. Hmm. I remember that on, on a sub two Zoom fall on the sales training, you said one day you'll, ha- you'll have a, your own family office. Do you remember saying that? I do remember yeah. that. I said yeah. one day I will have. It. So this is kind of like a junior family office. Okay. So this is a family office that um, normally you go hire your own people in your own family office. And that's when you're probably worth like 200 million, something like that. Mm-hmm. Right. And those people work exclusively for you, okay? I'm not there yet. I think I'll be there definitely. I, I personally, Jamil and I are like, well, let's make a goal of becoming billionaires in the next 12 years. I think as I acquire real estate and that real estate appreciates and I continue on the pace that I'm currently on, pun intended, I think that I could hit a billion dollars in 12 years, potentially. Yes, that's not okay? far and you'll see, you'll see it as the market trends downward, my net worth will be, who knows, maybe I'll only have $4 to my name in six months when the market trends downward. I don't know. But that's not, I don't care about that. I'm just acquiring, 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 acquiring. So the family office that I'm, I just hired, uh, they're about 11 grand a month. And they have, what they do is they're like, look, we're working with 15 other high net worth in- individuals or medium net worth individuals. And we're all managing all these people. So they have 14 people on staff and they will only work with, I think, up to like 30 people like me, right? So they'll have 30 families that they're managing instead of just one. And at some point when you get to a higher level, you then go to one person or one family office that you end up hiring for yourself. Wow. So we'll see what happens. I I don't know. I'm just learning this stuff as I go. People come to me and go, dude, you need a family office. You you can't be making all these decisions on your own. Mark the date, 2023 March. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty pretty interesting. Can we connect with sub two students even if uh, we're not in sub two at the moment? Yes, that's what I that's want. I don't want you joining sub two. I don't want you. Don't please don't join sub two. Go work with the sub two community. That's what here, they're here for. I'm highlighting Kevin. I'm highlighting Chris for a reason. I'm giving you their Instagram names on their screen. Look at their name right here. Chris JB underscore REI right here. Kevin Cho 12. What's keeping you from connecting with them right now? Myron Briley and Carolyn Briley in Dallas. If you are a sub two community member, please, there's 800 people in here. I would imagine probably four, maybe 500 people in here are the sub two community and another 400 or not. So if you are not a sub two community member, Richard Knowles, there you go. Richard Knowles is somebody you should definitely connect with. Richard knows. Shout out, bro. For real, bro. Isn't he amazing? I love him. We go back for years. Dude, he's the best. Mm -hmm. Um, There you go. Jesse Stan, all the way up in Alaska, says, hey, if you're not in sub two, reach out. Let's get you some deals done. Sub two leader. He is a leader. He's amazing. Love him. He's amazing. All right. So if you are in sub two, shout out in the comments and say, I'm sub two and say where you're at so people can follow you or look at you or whatever else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's go back to the topic at hand, direct to seller. Now, Kevin and Chris, you, do you guys ever do direct to agent or do you prefer direct to seller right now? 
Well, recently I've I've done direct to agent as of recent. Like okay. the last four deals I did was stemmed from direct to agent. So you're calling agents that have listings that are exp are long term on the market, or are you just calling a, a random agent list? No, long term on the market. Long term plus, on the market. Plus that, the equity position, yeah, and yeah, and then the equity position. We're scraping that. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. Okay, next week on Get Creative. Kevin Cho, you're going to do this from your own condo, okay? Okay. I got I got babies. To, I, I want to put my babies to sleep tonight, so I want you. I want everybody out of my house in ten minutes. I'm going to go upstairs, cuddle with my babies, make love to my wife, maybe go to bed. And next week on Get Creative, what we're going to do? Okay. Oh look, J Jacob Caddick is su super smart. He says here's the here's some of the people you should connect with: Ingrid Hernandez, Jabs Carter, Marta Miner, Derek Barton. Kevin Cho, Tyler Townsend, Marlon Johnson, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Okay. Shout out to everybody. Um, mostly, I was, I was mostly I was talking to Kevin Cho about getting out of my house. He's trying to spend the night, guys. <laughs> okay. We'll get him I, I was here like five times this week or four times. A lot. You might as well just live in the guest house, bro. <laughs> is it is it up for sale or no? I wonder if I could I could partition off my guest house to sell it to you sub two. Wouldn't that be the craziest thing? I buy my house sub two, and then I I partition off my guest house and sell that to you sub two. That'll be dope. Ooh, Jeremy Davis! Wow, Jeremy Davis! I never get to see Jeremy Davis on our lives anymore. But there's Jeremy uh -huh. Davis. Eight hundred people. If you guys are anywhere near Utah, Colorado, Nevada. Jeremy Davis is one of our great leaders in sub two. He just had a baby. Him and his beautiful congrats. wife just had a baby. So congrats to you guys. We love you guys. Amazing, amazing stuff. Brian Catalan, we'll see you in LA this week. By the way, if you guys are in LA, um, as I wrap up, let me give you guys the link to our LA meetup. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have that? Carly Grunman, if you are there, can you give us the link to the, the, the event bright for that? Uh, Chris, you're in Brooklyn. Yep. How often are you guys doing meetups out there? Not as much. Shout out to Paulina. I see her in the comments, man. That's my meetup partner. We're going to get together and we're going to get the NY meetups popping for sure. Why aren't you guys doing a meetup out there where you're like pulling lists and showing newbies how to call for you guys? Yeah, me and me and Paulina are going to get to work on that for sure. Okay, good. No. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. All right, I'm looking for... It's on the side chat. Oh, it is. Okay. That's a disaster, man. I'll see you when I get back. Okay, perfect. There, there's the link, guys. There's an Eventbrite link right there. Central Florida meetups. Guys, we just, I was just in Sarasota and Tampa and Miami literally two, two, three weeks ago. We jumped out of a plane. 27 of us jumped out of a plane. Where were you? Okay. Greg Ramos says, Brooklyn. Uh, where, in, where in Brooklyn are you? Who me? Canarsie all day. Canarsie? Yes, sir. Is that something that we should know? Hmm. Or you want people staying away because you don't want competition? Yeah, I'm not worried about competition, bro. Collaboration over competition. There you go. Jacob Caddick says, meet up at Keegley in Tempe, Arizona, Wednesday at 6 p.m. I will be there. Um, and then we're flying out to L.A. We're doing an L.A. meetup on Saturday. So you guys come out on Saturday if you guys are in L.A. How many people do you think have already signed up for this meetup? California, probably 300, 400. Oh, yeah. California is huge. I got the official numbers like 15 minutes ago. We've got 640 people that have RSVP'd Ooh. for the LA meetup this Saturday. Massive meetup. It's a big meetup. Usually you have about 30% of people that don't show up because they're like, oh, I'm excited. But then on Saturday, they find an excuse to like go do something else, whatever. Mm. But this one's so big that we're going to end up having it on Venice Beach out in the sand and hanging out with each other. So it's going to be a good old freaking time. And we'll see you guys on Saturday in L.A. Thursday. I'm sorry, not Thursday, but Wednesday, 6 p.m. That's what we should do, Chris. Right after the meetup at Keegley, we should go over to Sizzle and, and have Korean barbecue and see if we can get like 10 other sub two community members to go with us. Let's do it. Yes. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Anytime you guys want to know where I'm going, what I'm doing. DM me the word stage or event, either one of those words, and it'll trigger a link will get thrown to you. That is not me. Obviously, that's a robot. 
but 99% of the time in the DMs, that is me. It's just sometimes you guys trigger words like you guys, let's see, a word that you guys trigger sometimes, event. What are other words that they say? Event, stage. House. No, that would be Whoa. so bad. Yeah. Too many people will get things. Uh, Julie Daniel says, wear your hoodies. It'll be cold. Oh, yeah. Elephant and wealth. Th thank you so much. If you guys want to be part of the elephant challenge where we help out people that are non sub two students, go to my DMs and type in elephant. It'll trick. Oh, my woo. gosh. Woo. Kevin. You know, wait, Pace. I'm actually I actually have, have to be in L.A. this week because I have to go to the Korean embassy. I might actually see you there. Bro, you, I guess you got to come, bro. Joe Minjares <laughs> just paid you $100. That's a Southwest Holy ticket. Huh? Yeah, shout out to Joe. Shout out to Joe. 100 Thank you. bucks. Wow. 20 bucks. How much How much money did we get donated today? Oh, uh, we probably had about 450 bucks come in today. What's Holy the most? What's, what's the most? We're trying to top that. Uh, $1,800. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're not going to top that tonight. I tell people, do not donate. Please do not. People do it. People do it to be funny, but it got so bad at the $1,800 thing that we ended up just giving the money away. Yeah. Wow. I was like, I'm just going to give this money away. I don't want this money. It stressed, it stressed me out. Okay. Oh my Christian God. Hernandez. Shout out to Christian Hernandez. I just bought a deal from Christian Hernandez. Christian, you oh, and I got a YouTube video to make, talk about the deal, et cetera. And by the way, Kevin, next time I come on, you come on the show, I'm going to give you a breakdown of everything you have to cover on your deal because you guys failed miserably today. Well, I wasn't prepared for this deal. I was prepared, prepared yeah, I for a different wasn't. deal. Come on, bro. You're a story. I, you know, I know Chris is a storyteller. I think he was trying to give you the limelight tonight. But you know, you know, I, you know I get nervous kinda... sometimes in the beginning. YouTube doesn't take – you know, that's a really good question. You guys want to see how much money YouTube paid me this month? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's, let's look. I'll, I'll show you. We got upgraded from Southwest to American Airline. Bro, you're balling. <laughs> okay, let's check it out. I'll give you I'll get, do a little screen share for you guys so you guys can um see this stuff. I'm all I wish somebody would show me this stuff when I was like starting out that you could see what's possible. Okay. All right, so here's my channel. Let's go Chris to YouTube Studio. Chris oh, man, shout out to my brother Richard Knowles, man. There I'll you be, go. There's I'll my there's my time. last 28 day snapshot. So this I've got eighteen thousand dollars in in 28 days, 2.2 million views, and 118 thousand hours were watched on my YouTube channel in the last 28 days. That's wow. crazy. Now my goal by the end of the year is 20 thousand subscribers. Yeah, I know you could get there. Yeah, well, I yeah. promise you. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. You can get there. You can get there. All right. Proud of you boys. You guys are amazing. Um, Christian. Oh, yeah. J James Gamble. I don't want to cut him short. He says, G get Kevin Cho to Cali Cali fund. Cali fund. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Richard Knowles just dropped a hundred dollars on you, bro. Oh, my gosh. My brother. I'll be out there. Wait, we're, we're getting the results for the most creative. Chris, deal. Chris, Chris, why are you not just just come to L.A. with us, bro? What are you doing? I, will. I got just you. extend your trip. I'll do we it. Got another hundred bucks. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Let's see how much money we got so Damn, far. Amy just dropped another hundred. Arnie Newton. I love Arnie. Good to see you, brother. We're doing a deal together right now, Arkansas. Sub wow. two deal. Um, we just, we just, I just, he just tagged me on Instagram on it. Uh, Pace, if you need a venue in LA, we got one here for sub two. Dorian, is it big enough though? Is L okay? Hold on. Is LA Louisiana or is it Los Angeles? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought L.A. was L.A. and Louisiana is L.A. Okay, so here's the thing, Chris and Kevin, are you guys gonna drive? You're gonna Kevin. You're gonna drive Chris, right? So you can have your little key out there. No, I was. I was actually gonna fly. I was Chris, gonna. Get, I, 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 if you guys right. fly, I, I'll get you both. Your guys' round trip tickets because obviously our audience: Jacob, Jacob Caddick, Christian Hernandez, Richard Knowles. Um, Arnie Newton, everybody dropped all the money on you guys. I will pay for it. Okay. Oh my God. James Gamble. Yeah. Korean food fund. Okay. We're, we're bro. I'm going to take you to Korean food in LA. You don't know what good Korean food is. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Jason wow. Yee. That's my guy. J Jason, where are you at, bro? Oh, he's in Bushwick. Bro. That's dope. J hook up with Jason Yee. He just got you a, a plane ticket out to LA. 
Oh, definitely. Oh my wow. gosh. Hey guys, look who just joined the live, by the way. Daniel ben Q. Otto. DQ, DQ. All right, guys. Jacob Caddick, I think we're about we're at about seven hundred dollars. It's a lot of money, and so it's going to go to the Chris and Kevin return flight home and back um, deal. So, uh, Chris and Kevin, buy your own flights. I'll Venmo you guys money once this money hits. Because, like wow. you guys saw in my bank account, I actually don't have any money, so I got to wait till YouTube pays me before I pay you guys. <laughs> no, we got your Amex. It's okay. <laughs> that is true. I I will live off my Amex for a while. When the problem is when I go places like Dairy Queen. The other night I'm taking my family to, to, um, food and they go, I, they go that, sir, that'll be $18. I'm like, great. I hand them my Amex. They go, we don't take that. I'm like, <gasps> mm. I look That's back at my wife. And I go, do you have $18? <laughs> wow. Okay. So Da Vinci Dave says, Pace, please message me. I'd like to ask you a single question that if you answered can literally change the trajectory of my family's life forever. It's a simple question. Please make the time, bro. I love everything you do for the world. Keep it up. Da Vinci Dave, I cannot imagine what the question is that could change the, your world that I have not already answered. Hmm. Hmm. I'm curious right. what the question is. <laughs> Dorian, if you need a venue in LA, what did he say, guys? Did he say LA or Los, Los Angeles or Louisiana? Help me, help me understand this. Los Angeles. He said Los Angeles? Yeah. Okay. Wonder what's we'll here, Dave, guys. Okay, we gotta we gotta wrap this up. Okay. I have ten billion dollars that will uh, ten billion dollars that will be released to you, but I need two twelve million dollars first. Yep, I like that one. Five oh three penthouse. Let's go get you dinner. I don't know that if I go to somebody named Penthouse, my wife is gonna approve of that. <laughs> Can you change your name not penthouse to be not penthouse? I know. <laughs> it's our audience behind us, guys. It's it's great. Dairy Queen Fund. Jer hey, Jacob Caddick, bro. Thank you for the $18. I'll take my wife and kids to, to uh, Dairy Queen tonight. All right, guys. Thank you so much for Get Creative. Chris and Kevin, did you guys have a good night time tonight? Oh, this, this was yeah, so was fun. fun. Is there a more fun podcast than Get Creative? No. no. Not even close, bro. Wow, Ryan wow. LaRue, bro. Get those dudes a plane ticket are, because driving to LA sucks. Wow. Wait, we're at we're at American Airline first class. <laughs> we stayed we'll on get, we're gonna get you on Southwest and make sure you're in C boarding group, dog. What are you talking about? <laughs> Maybe even D boarding. Ryan LaRue, thank you, brother. Ryan LaRue's um guys, Ryan LaRue's awesome. Done a couple of deals with him. He made on one of the deals I've done with Ryan, he made over sixty thousand dollars assigning it to me. And that house he assigned to me got Jamil and I the TV show on AE. Wow. Yeah. Ryan LaRue is that the man. Breakdown. That's a great deal breakdown. We should do that. Larry Parsons, bro. Thank you for the $2. $2. Kevin, I need your list to send $100 next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give you the list. Uh, okay. Julie, any, Julie, anytime you want to hang out, text me. You come hang out. Bring your husband to my house for dinner. I'd love to have a private dinner with you and your husband. Come hang out. We'd love to see you. We'd love to have you at the house. Okay? Come over anytime, Julie. You're, you're one of the few people, probably 100 people in, in my mind that are allowed to come into my house at any point, and you are in that list. So love you. Appreciate you tremendously. Um, okay, guys, we got to wrap up before people start dropping more money. We got, we're got we at like 850 bucks. Wow. Thank you, guys. We will be buying Korean food, and, and I wish I could tag everybody. Guys, if you donated money tonight, DM me, okay? Oh, my gosh. J Jacob Caddick says, please don't, don't buy a spirit. <laughs> J Jacob Caddick, Arnie New in Ryan Lou, DM me and remind me, and I'm going to tag you guys every time I pay for something for this trip and just go, thanks. Shout out to the, the Shout out to all the investors for this real estate trip for Kevin and Chris. It will not disappoint you. They will pay you back by getting deals done. All right, guys. We love you. Appreciate you guys. Have a great night. Later. Bye.